All right, so today we are doing some AR-10 stuff. We are shooting 308 Winchester in an AR-10. I loaded up a bunch of ammo a long time ago, and I never got to shooting it, to be entirely honest with you. Um, it wasn't even made for this gun, but it's still been laying around. We had 100 rounds loaded. I've been trying to get the thing somewhat zeroed so we don't shoot the GoPro. And uh, it was actually kind of challenging because they weren't grouping all that good. So anyway, we are shooting 155 grain bullets and 175 grain bullets. We're using Peterson brass, large rifle primer brass. Uh, on the top, we've got some 175 grain Burger long range target bullets behind or in front of IMR 4064 from 39 grains to 41.7 grains working up in 0.3 grain increments. On the top, actually, that was the top, this is the bottom. Um, same brass, we're, we're using CCI 200 primers, I don't think I mentioned that. But we're gonna have Lapua 155 grain Skenars or Cnars, however you wanna say it. Hodgdon CFE 223, ranging from 45.3 grains to 48 grains, also uh, in 0.3 grain increments. Now, I have already shot the first row, so the lightest charge of each of these didn't have great luck now we are going to probably instead of alternating between bullets we're going to shoot all of one bullet and then we're going to move on to the next bullet so the first bullet of choice that we're going to be shooting is going to be the 155 grain skin R or scenar behind or in front of again the uh, cfe 223 so i shot the first round it hit the bullseye on the last target, change to a fresh target, and that is where we are right now. So I'm going to shoot four rounds of, to give you an exact number here, it's going to be starting at 45.6 grains of CFE 223 behind that 155 grain Skinar. Skinar, with la, Lapua, Lapua Skinar. Anyway, four rounds, you know, hopefully, not kill my camera. That actually looks pretty good compared to what the uh, the first couple groups out of this gun look like, so that's encouraging. So we're gonna go ahead and move on with this bullet. We're gonna stick with this bullet. I don't have my brass catcher on this thing and I left it at the house. I don't have time to go get it, so we're just gonna run with it, and I'm gonna have to go pick up some brass and uh, check it after every time I shoot. So bear with me, we'll be right back. Our next, I believe we are shooting 45.9 grains of CFE 223. It's a 155 grain Lapua bullet. Now that's more like what I was seeing earlier. Sorry, I hit the tripod. I'm chopping trees now, I'm behind the target. It's been a super windy day, but um, it's cool enough that I felt like it would at least help me to cool this sucker off while shooting this video because I knew I was gonna have to run through this stuff pretty quick. And I doubt I'm gonna get through all the uh, the ammo here by the time the sun goes down. All right, next we have 46.2 grains of CFE 223 with the 155 grain skin R. I didn't see where some of those went, to be completely honest with you. All right, we are now on 46 and a half grains of CFE 223. Uh, unfortunately, as you guys can clearly tell, um, I have this weird beef with 30 cal cartridges. I don't know why, and I've tried to be a friend of the 30 cal, but it does not want to be my friend. As you can tell, this gun is shooting quite poorly, and I have tried very hard to make this gun um, a decent shooter in terms of how I built it. So, uh, 
I, I didn't necessarily load these for this gun, so that, that might be part of it, but uh, I, I'm not gonna blame it on that because chances are I'm probably never gonna be able to get anything to shoot good in this gun, but we're gonna continue to try. So 46 and a half grains CFE 223. Let's see how she does. At this point, we're just having target practice. We're not really getting any usable information here, but full disclosure, um, I know CFE-223 is a really popular powder. I personally have not had that great of luck with it. I loaded these before I kind of found that out, but this powder in general just hasn't served me all that well in all reality for the, the class of cartridges that it's supposed to be good for. Like, 308 and 223, they're they're supposed to be like relatively ideal for 223. Um, I mean, obviously it's part of the name, but I just haven't had a lot of luck with it, so I don't want to uh, I don't want to make it seem like this powder should shoot good for me because I've never had bad luck with it. Of course, every gun likes something different, but um, a lot of people tend to immediately assume it's the bullet. I've seen a lot of times uh, it hasn't so much necessarily been the bullet that a gun won't prefer so much as the powder that's pushing it, which is odd to a lot of folks, but uh, it's happened to me quite a bit. So anyway, um, we're gonna move on to 46.8 grains, I believe, of CFE 223. But um, these bullets also, I have a lot of them, and I haven't really had great luck with these projectiles in just about anything either. So I'm kind of using a crappy combination, if I'm being entirely honest. and. I got a lot of CFE 223, and I also have a lot of these projectiles, so I would like to find something that shoots them decent, but uh, just not having the greatest luck so far. So we're gonna we're gonna keep trying, even though it's looking like kind of a waste of time. And honestly, I might bail here pretty quick because I really don't want to shoot the GoPro, and the lower targets are much closer to the GoPro. Um, so we'll see how brave I get, but I might be changing the target relatively quickly. <laughs> All right, we are going to shoot this group, and then I think I'm going to go change the target because we are going to be getting really close to the where the GoPro is sitting. So um, with the groups that we're producing here, not super confident that uh, we're not going to shoot it. So five rounds, 46.8, I think. Um, here we go. Wish me luck. Well, four of those five shots were almost encouraging, but uh, that one of those shots was, was trying real hard to go over there and say hello to Mr. GoPro. So uh, for the safety of that tiny little camera, we are going to go replace this target so I can start at the top again and stay far, far away from it. And the gun honestly needs some time to cool down. It's getting pretty, pretty toasty, even though it's a cool day and it's, been pretty windy. It's actually looking like it's calming down a little bit though, so that's that's nice. But anyway, we'll be right back. All right, we are up to 27.1 grains of CFE 223 behind a 155 grain bullet. It's almost like they're trying to shoot around a group. Like there's an existing spot that it just, they're not allowed to hit. But uh, we're gonna shoot them all anyway, as long as we don't run into any pressure issues, which the AR-10, I, I just, it tears up the brass regardless of whether it's a low charge or a high charge evidently. So uh, brass doesn't look great, but it's pretty much been that way from the beginning. Um, it doesn't necessarily look like pressure so much as it does just the violence of the action which I could definitely tune but there's no point in tuning it until you find a load that you can kind of tune it to 
uh, and I don't even know what bullet weight or anything we're, we're gonna stick with with this thing yet. It's, this is really um, some of the first rounds through the gun. We did a little bit of a break in on it, not like shoot clean, shoot clean, shoot clean, but um, just basically put some rounds down the barrel so it's not a fresh barrel. But uh, we're gonna, put, golly, that sun is friggin' bright now. Um, I'm gonna pick up those pieces of brass, we're gonna load a new mag, and then we will start on 47.4. You can tell I, I'm just ready to be done. Been a long day. I am gonna bring this thing down, and by this thing, I mean the turret, or the, I'm gonna bring the point of impact up, because, the groups seem to kind of just casually be getting lower and lower. So I'm going to hope that this kind of corrects that. Man, that would be really nice if I had a sunshade right now. That sun is like kicking my butt. Alright. is thick. Actually might want to be one of the best groups we've shot all day. All right, cool. Moving on. All right, so you'll notice I now have eye protection on and it is because I uh, feel the gas coming out of the gun and hitting me in the eyeballs and it was a good reminder that you're always supposed to wear these. Unfortunately, now the sun is like right in my face and it's incredibly hard to see the target through the scope. I am not making excuses for these bad groups. I'm simply saying this is unpleasant, but uh, <clears throat> you guys always remind me that I need to wear these, so I'm trying to be better, except I forgot like half the test to do this, so I'm sorry. I will try to improve upon myself. That is what a risen citizen is supposed to do. So we're gonna shoot like 24.7 or something like that. I, say, I keep saying 24, I'm, I'm thinking 223 stuff. Literally, we are gonna be shooting 47.7 .7 grains of CFE 223. I'm sorry, I I need to do better about actually looking at my card instead of just spouting off random numbers. Do not use this load data for reference. This is literally just for you guys to watch for entertainment. It's not, this this is not published load data. Well, it should be published somewhere because I got it from somewhere, but always consult a manual, not a person on YouTube. That's just a general good rule of thumb. So 47.7 .7 grains of some powder behind some bullet. And we're going to put some holes in some target, and it's probably not going to look all that pretty. I'm not going to lie, I did not see most of those impacts, so I just assumed we were like in the correct area. Uh, it is really hard to see right now. I need an eye patch. And even then, it, there's still a heck of a glare on this scope. I don't even have a sunshade for this thing. Even if I wanted to use it, it's not an option. Good lord. I just couldn't complain. Oh, wow. So, that group was awful. Um, hmm. We're still going to shoot this last group, but at least I think. Let me look at the brass just to be safe. All right, so we are going to shoot this last group of, I believe, 48 grains. 48 grains of CFE 223. However, uh, full disclosure, that last group, the brass did have, there was a couple, two pieces of brass out of that uh, batch that the primers did kind of look a little flat. So um, I'm definitely getting to the point where I, I don't really want to go much higher anyway, but fortunately these are very small incremental changes in powder charge. So 0.3 grain more than what we just shot is um, doesn't make me nervous, but always be careful, always be safe. Just pay attention to your, your pressure signs and don't ignore them. So this is going to be the last one that we shoot for sure. Uh, that's the last one that we have loaded anyway, so it is looking like this is a good stopping point. Honestly, I'd 
typically would probably just stop on that last group anyway, but we're gonna go ahead and shoot the last one anyway. So we're gonna shoot this and then I'm gonna change the target again and we're gonna start on a fresh target with 175 grain burgers next. Golly, that went way right, okay. Primer looks a little flat, but it, other than that, it really looks fine. Wow. That's a good way to end the day with a little rapid fire. Every time I basically just check to make sure I didn't hit the GoPro. <laughs> All right, so we're probably gonna retry some of those because they clearly showed some serious potential. I mean, incredibly sarcastic because most of those look like complete garbage, but um, we are gonna move on. I'm gonna change the target to a fresh target, probably. Uh, <laughs> but we're gonna move on to the uh, 175 grain burgers with the IMR 4064 powder. I'm a little more hopeful for those because I like burger bullets and um, I, I like stick powders. I'm not necessarily gonna say I like 4064 because I've never actually really used it that much, but I know it's a good 308 powder, but uh, CFE 223 is also supposed to be a good, be a good uh, 308 powder as well. And we can see how well that worked, but um, we're gonna shoot them anyway. So I'm gonna go change the target. I'm gonna turn off the cameras, let the barrel cool down for a little bit. We're gonna throw in a fresh mag and we're going to start from scratch and hopefully have some better luck here. So let's get started. So unfortunately we've run into a pretty major complication. Uh, evidently I, this is where it's biting me in the butt that these weren't loaded for this gun. Um, the gun I did load them for, apparently had a longer mag well because these rounds will not feed from the magazine on the 175 grain burgers, which is a major shame because I'm gonna have to single feed like 45 rounds in an AR. So I'm not, I'm not uh, super stoked about that, but um, they ain't gonna work coming out of the magazine. So anyway, the, uh, I poured that away for no reason. The um, <clears throat> charges on these are from 39 grains to 41.7 grains. I already shot 39, so we're starting with 39.3. <clears throat> then we're gonna go up 0.3 grain increments up to 41.7. So one shot at a time. We're gonna start with uh, 39.3 and we're just gonna run this thing like a bolt gun, which uh, we know how to do, so that's okay. Just not uh, super proud of myself right now. I'm disappointed, <clears throat> but that's okay. We won't make it work. Just gonna be a gigantic pain in the butt. I really hope these start off on paper. If I'm seeing that right, that thing hit like way high left and barely even made it on the paper. So we're gonna have to come way down and right just to keep this group on the paper. Well, considering the next shot went right where I wanted it to go, that's actually kind of encouraging. But y'all gotta remind me not to get my hopes up. You know what happens when I do. That never goes right. <clears throat> so, what's new? All right, let's see how this goes. It's getting dark enough, I'm having a hard time seeing the actual impact. I went in the same hole. Well, that's better than the 155s we're doing. All right, next up we got our 39.6 grain load. What 
myself there's three in one hole by some stroke of luck. Actually didn't look too bad. I mean, considering what the 155s were doing, if these are even remotely close to an inch, I'll be pretty happy, <laughs> which is sad. But uh, camera needs a new battery. You guys are about to die. So uh, I'm going to, ooh, that's gross. Um, I'm gonna replace the batteries in the, the camera and uh, we'll keep shooting. Okay, we are moving on to 39.9 grains of IMR4064. That don't seem right. That's a little more normal. I'm not upset that it was shooting good. Don't misunderstand me. It's just playing games with me. I know better. Looks like a pretty good group. We're through eight gas gun. I'm not gonna complain about that at all. All right, we're moving on to 40.2 grains of IMR 4064. trying to convince me that it can shoot. Maybe not amazing, but it's shooting better with these bullets than I was expecting it to, so I'm actually not uh, not disappointed right now. That's good. This video was a pass-fail kind of deal. The burger bullets so far get a pass. Well, the poo is still gonna fail. <laughs> so, at least we uh, have something that's shooting acceptably, because I, I, like I said, I literally have a horrible relationship, not just with 308, but with 30 cal in general. So if this thing shoots halfway decent, I, I'll be surprised, um, which it is right now. So uh, I'm actually, I'm a little encouraged with this gun. I think with more work, we could definitely get this thing shooting under an MOA consistently. Provided I do my part and I'm in a position like this with a, a sturdy freaking bipod that I'm practically putting the gun in a vise. But if it can do sub MOA with, with as many cheat codes as I can put on it, that's fine. That's great. Because uh, 308 is hard to shoot well. And it's got a break on it, but it's it's still pretty punchy. I'm not going to lie. With those 155s, when we got on the high charges, it was, <laughs> it was hitting me pretty hard still. So... Um, it's doable. It's, I'm not saying 308's unbearable, but um, I definitely don't prefer to shoot it over some of my other favorite calibers. So anyway, we're going to move on to, I believe, 40 and a half grains. Yes, 40.5 grains of IMR 4064. Gosh, dang it. I'm aimed at the wrong freaking target. What? No. Gosh darn it. I just went real, real stupid for a second there. Sorry. Well, whoops. <laughs> Got a phone call and immediately forgot what I was doing. Come on, go in the chamber. Go in the chamber. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's still not a bad group, even though I shot the wrong freaking spot on the paper there on the first round. I would like to give the gun more time to cool here, but the sun is actively going down. So I'm going to try to shoot these basically as fast as I can get away with here. And we're just going to let it rip.
we are going to try to get the rest of these on this target um if they start getting really wild like the last powder or the cfe 223 powder charges did we're not going to shoot um that close to the gopro but these seem like they can handle it so we're going to give it a go until it tells me otherwise Uh, it's starting to get a little squirrely. That might have been me, though. I mean, aside from that one shot going high, it didn't look too bad. Assuming I'm looking at that right. But it, it's getting hard for me to see. But we're, we're going to keep going. Much that I didn't really have the time to let this thing cool off, I had to because the Mirage was getting <clears throat> bad enough that I couldn't really see the target at all. Um, it was just kind of like looking through water. So I let the gun cool off. I know it's probably getting hard to see the target footage. I am sorry, but I'm we're running out of daylight. I got to get this done. So um, we got the two groups left, two final charges. Everything's looked fine up to this point. So we're going to go ahead and shoot these and hopefully you can see them and hopefully uh, they group tight enough that the uh, GoPro will not be in danger. The Mirage is still present, but it's it's better. But it's it's calmed down enough. Like the wind's practically gone, so it's it's kind of hard to see, especially with it getting darker. I, I can't really see the impact. I think I see it, but I'm not really sure where it hit. I can see that one. I can see they're stringing off a little bit, but not enough to make me nervous yet. I can't see a couple, maybe three of those hits, but um, I think the lowest one was still high enough above them. We can we can shoot the last group. We'll put it that way. All right, last group. Well, that was far from a fantastic target by any means, but those shot way better than the 155 grain Lapua's did, I mean by far. So we'll uh, probably do some dramatically different changes if we continue to play with this gun on camera. And uh, I've got some ideas, but I'm not gonna talk about them quite yet. But the uh, the changes we're going to make are, are hopefully going to make it shoot dramatically better. If not, then uh, we'll probably sell it and just stick with 6.5 grade more because I know how to shoot that. <laughs> but uh, all jokes aside, thank you guys for watching. Check out the links in the description below. Stay resin, take care, be safe, and we will see you in the next video.